Thank you for tuning in to Upon the Rock broadcast. I'm your host, Pastor Lawrence Shakir. I believe the Word of God will build a godly foundation in the lives of people. There is more available information on our website. You can log on to ShakirMinistries.org. Now, let's go into today's message. Your flesh is saying, do this, but the Spirit is tapping you and saying, don't do it. You're going to ruin your life. You're going to ruin your, your generation. You're ruin. You're ruin everything. You're not thinking clearly. And then it's like the Lord had to grab you by your head. Come on. We got to go. We got to go. And you break down in the sweat. And God said, no, we have to go because you about to get in trouble. And so you have to listen to what God is saying. This woman came to him dressed sexy and dressing in a sexual manner. And he wasn't, he was looking up, or, up and down on her. And he wasn't even probably thinking about, she didn't, she, again, this woman hadn't even said anything yet, but he already know what is going on here. And for some of you that I'm talking to right now, you know, you, you can't be playing with fire. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You can't just look at that person and play with fire. Oh, I'm just talking to him. Oh, I'm just flirting. Keep on and see what happened because that's what that's what the enemy is doing. You haven't even said the conversation yet, but it's already in your mind. And sooner or later, if you're not careful, you'll find yourself doing something that you say you'll never do. The best thing for you to do is to end it now and to stop it now before things start to grow. Okay. And I don't know why I said that, but I believe that it was for somebody who really need to hear it because too often. We start something that we don't know how to get out of. Either you're too nice or you're too gullible to either say no, but you need to know how to just hit the brakes and say, I'm not going there. Because you already know that if I entertain this relationship, something dealing with sex is going to come up. And I already know, and I don't want to ruin my life. Okay? And that it takes wisdom, but it also takes strength to do that because everybody can do that. Some people say, well, you know, if that opportunity comes, I'm sorry, you have to forgive me, but I, I got to hit that. No, you do not have to hit that. You can just be what God calls you to be. You don't have to be what the world calls you to do. Okay? Look at this. So uh, she was brass. She was wise. And um, she, she never stays at home. She was the rebellious type that never stays at home. Verse 12, she's often seen in the streets and the markets soliciting at every corner. I wonder what she's soliciting. I wonder what she's selling. She's always out there on the corners. She's always out there showing her goods to everybody. She's always out there. And the Bible talks about she's uh, she's loud. Did it say that? Yeah. It says that she was brass, rebellious, type, never stayed at home. Um, uh, I'm not sure if it says it, but it, it says it uh, later on that she's a loud woman. And sometimes the the bad side or the uh, the one that God does not want you to see can have a louder voice than the ones that God does want you to see. What am I what am I saying by that? You know, you know, I hear people that say there are not a lot, a lot of good men out there or there's not a lot of good women out there. It's only because they see or they hear the loud ones, the rebellious ones, more than the other ones. I assure you, there are good men out there because I've seen them. I talk to them. They have their own health. They have their heads set on straight, and they love God, and they they're single, and they you know they they're waiting to meet the right woman. But too too many loud, rebellious, uh, unpure ones are. Are, are, are saturating the scene that you can't even, they can't even see the good ones. Same thing with, with the women. They said there's not a lot of good men out there or, or, or so far. I, I'm sorry, I said that last time, but the men say the same thing. There's not a lot of good women out there, but they are. There are some beautiful Christian, God-fearing women that don't want to show the world their shape and don't want to show the world uh, everything that they have and, 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 and they choose to, to remain pure, but they're not getting the uh, attention. They're not getting the, um, the the broadcasts like these loud, rebellious kind. And so she's loud, it says. And uh, she's always at the corner. And, and, and watch this. It says that she threw her arms around him. She's aggressive. She threw her arms around him. She still hadn't said anything at this time. Have you noticed that? She, all she did was do her body language and she, she her reputation of being loud has preceded her. The Bible says she threw her arms around him and she kissed him. Oh, there it go. She kissed him. She threw her arms around him. She made the first move. 
Okay? He was just being gullible and dumb, walking down the path at twilight. His mind was already there. So by the time she threw her arms around him and kissed him, he was already hers. She already, she already knew that that's what made her throw her arms around him and kiss him. And sometimes the enemy knows that you have already gone over that edge, that you have already gone to the point where there's no return. And so he sends just the right one just to come and just wink at you or hug you or, or kiss you. And then you already fell. She still hadn't said anything yet. But she done everything else. She she wrapped her arms around him and she kissed him. And with a brazen or a sly or a sexual look, she said, now she said something. Okay? With this brazen look, she said, I have offered my sacrifices and I just finished my vows. It, it was you I was looking for. I came out to find you and here you are. Notice what she says now. I have offered my sacrifices and finished my vows. That is a religious uh, statement. So she can be religious. Oh, yeah. Sometimes these people are in the body of Christ. You may think, oh, those are prostitutes. Those are out there. We're the unclean people. Touch not the unclean. Touch not the unclean. No, they're inside of the church sometimes. Some of these people will seduce inside the church. They, they wear all the right clothes. Some of them, they wear you know, a little bit more provocative clothes, and they are, they are, and I say this in a balanced way, because everybody's not here on this level. Some of them are just at different stages of their journey in Christ, but some of them are sent from the enemy's camp to divide and conquer. And so they, uh, she threw her arms around him and she kissed him and said, I have made my sacrifices. And she got through going to church, pastor really preached, or he yeah, I, I, you know, I just came from church or, or amen, you know, say all the, the Christian things, but this one is not from God. It looks like it from the beginning because he was already looking at her up and down. By the time she kissed him and, and hugged him and said that, you know, I'm on God's side too, he was already in for it. So this poor dumb fool didn't even have a chance. My point in saying is this, that uh, she said, I have offered my sacrifices and I just finished my vows. And it was you I was looking for. Uh, I came out to find you, and here you are. I was looking for somebody just like you. No, she probably says that to everybody, or he says that to everybody. I've been looking for a woman like you, and, and if I can have a relationship, I've been searching for somebody just like you, you know, and, and, and everything is just going in the air, and it's like, oh, my goodness, this is what I've been looking for. But are you sure? Are you sure? Because God says I had something for you. But look at this. I was looking for you. Here you are. My bed is spread with the colored sheets of finest linen imported from Egypt. She's describing her bed now. Now he's thinking about the bed. He's thinking about her. He's thinking about the bed, thinking about her. And she's talking about how the bed is soft and they got silk sheets and everything. And then here she come looking, coming out with lingerie. And he's thinking about the bed and her. And, you know, his natural impulses are starting to take over now. Okay. Or her natural impulse starting to take over now. Bed is spread with color. She's finally in Egypt. I have perfumed my bed. There she goes again. I, I spread the bed down. It smells good and with myrrh and aloe and, and cinnamon. Come, come on, come to my room. Come up to where I'm at, she's saying. And um, let's drink our fill of love until morning. We got all night, she's saying. Nobody's going to interrupt me and nobody's going to stop. All you have to do is just follow me, she's saying. And that's what the enemy is saying. All you have to do is just follow me. It's nothing wrong. It's just me and you. Nobody's going to know about it. It's dark. Nobody sees us. It's just me and you. And why don't you just come up to my room, come up to my bed again. I had the bed already ready for you because I just came out here looking for you, and here you are. Look at this. Let's drink our, our, our fill of love until morning. Let's enjoy each other's caresses. Let's enjoy each other's bodies. Let's enjoy each other's uh, sexual uh, company. Verse, uh, verse 19, where my husband is not at home, he's away on a long trip. He has taken a wallet full of money with him. He will not return until later this month. I have all night and all next day if you want to stay even longer. So the enemy says that it's, it's, nobody's going to find out. It's just going to be between me and you. It's our little secret, and we can do this as long as you want to do it. The Bible talks about right here, verse 21, the result. And I'm sorry if I'm going too fast. So she seduced him with her pretty speech, with her flattery. She enticed him. 
He followed her at once. I bet he did. Because he was already, he was already, by the time she came out, he was already there already. He was already ready to go upstairs to her. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been walking down her path, her street. So she seduced him with her pretty speech. With her flattery, she enticed him. He followed her at once, like an ox going to the slaughter, or like a trap stayed. Verse 23, awaiting the arrow that would pierce his heart. He was like a bird flying into a snare, little knowing that it will cost him his life, little knowing that it will cost him his future, little knowing that it will cost him his destiny. He followed her off a little thrill because he couldn't control his sexual purity. It cost him the rest of his destiny. Some people walk away with STDs. Some people walk away with unplanned pregnancies. Some people walk away with soul ties. Little knowing that it will cost him his life. I think that's probably the saddest part in this verse. It's little knowing it will cost him, not his day, not his month, his life. His life, her life. It will cost her her life because of this one act of not being sexual pure. Listen to me, my sons, and pay attention to my words. Don't let your heart stay stray away toward her. Don't wander down her path. Don't go down that, that internet site. Don't look down. Don't look at that person when they walk past. You want the second look and the third look. Don't look, don't look that way. Verse 26, for she has been the ruin of many. Numerous, numerous men have has been her victim. Her house is the road to the grave. Her bedroom is the den of death. Her bedroom, her final result is the den of death. This is where death is at. When you follow this adulterous relationship, when you follow this sexual immorality relationship, the end of it is death. That's one of the reasons why we do series like um, Strengthen Your Brother's Sexual um, uh, sexual Healing is because so many people are dying off things like this and they don't know how to come out of this. And so what I was trying to do, I want to make sure that I can provide opportunities for my brothers and, and sisters when it comes to this because I don't have all the answers. I don't. I'm, I'm one of these guys that's just trying to get the word of God out there so that maybe one or two people can hear it and perhaps they can get free because if they can get free, their whole generation is free. And so we're trying to destroy yokes when it comes to the word of God. But this is a sad story. And I encourage you to read Proverbs chapter 7 in your spare time because People have been destroyed over just some of the, I just went through just a little bit of it, but it's even more than that. And people have been destroyed over uh, just walking down the wrong path, going down the wrong side and, and being open up, being exposed to the wrong thing at the wrong time. Parents need to talk to their children about this, this situation. If you have boys or girls, and inform them before the world gets to them because they got to have the right idea. You know the right way, so you need to be able to train them. Just like how Solomon trying to train his son, you need to take the initiative and don't try to depend on the schools to do it because they will teach them a perverted way. you got to teach them God's way so that you can have a godly seed. I really don't know what else to say when it comes to sexual purity except for stay in the Bible, be led by the Holy Spirit, and trust God to direct your paths when it comes to your relationships. And I want to be able to pray for you. Real quick, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for my brothers and sisters that's, that uh, want sexual purity, that you will bring the right people to them, that you will help them, Lord, to know you in a more personal, intimate way. Allow them, Lord, to have peace with themselves and, 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 um, and before they can have peace with, with anybody else, Lord. But teach them who you are, God, in their singleness or in their marriage, Lord. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will uh, allow them and us, Lord, to walk away from the, uh, the path of the adulterous or the immoral woman or man, that we not walk down that path during twilight, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you will cover them, Lord, and give them the right uh, views to see what you cause them to see. And we thank you, Lord, for this time. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to write me. If you want to register for Strengthen Your Brothers, please let me know. Uh, you can register online. We're going to be in Alpharetta. If you're coming from all over, it's a hotel. You can you can book your hotel. 
Um, if you want to sponsor somebody to help them get sexually pure, or if you're a parent that wants to be able to help train your, your kids when it comes to sexual um, uh, identity or sexual purity at a young age, meet me in Alpharetta. Send them to me, and um, I think you'll be pretty glad that you did. You know, it's so important for us to gain victory when it comes to sexual immorality and, and sexual addiction uh, and, and, and provide sexual healing. You know, this is a, an issue that's hurting the body of Christ. I mean, we're losing thousands and tens of thousands of, of men and women when it comes to this issue because so many people are, are being held down, can't reach their full God-given potential because of this particular stronghold. What we're trying to do is do our part is to help strengthen our brothers and help strengthen our sisters as well so that they can become everything that God called them to be. So that's why we're putting together this seminar called Strengthen Your Brother's Sexual Healing. Originally it was going to be just for men, but we need to also have some for the ladies as well because it's not just the men that really have this issue. And so it's the men and the women. And so I'm going to be teaching but also we have Minister Kanita Lewis, who will be ministering as well for the ladies, um, so that we can kind of get the whole picture and not just so a one side or from the male's perspective, but we also need to get the female's perspective as well, okay? Uh, the registration fee, when it comes to the registration, we're gonna leave that up to you, okay? So it's gonna be a gift of any amount. You don't, you don't have to worry about a certain uh, you know, amount. All we ask is that you please come on time and you be prepared to stay for the entire seminar. But uh, whatever you give is going to help us to be able to give back and to build more workshops and build more people. And so keep in mind, if you do decide to give anything, that it helps us to continue the work of the ministry. And so, and those of you all that can do more, we appreciate you for those who can't do as much. But we're going to leave the registration fee totally up to you. But I believe that there's healing that's coming. I believe that people can be set free from this bondage. I believe that people who have had strongholds for years can, can potentially see the deliverance that they've been praying for. So that's what we want to do. We want to help you. The Bible talks about iron sharpens iron, so shall one man sharpen another. Two of the same thing can only make it better. And so we're going to share our, uh, you know, our experience. We're going to share these workshops. We're going to um, you know, give everything that, that, that God has put on our heart for you. All we ask is that you just, you know, uh, fill out the contact form so we can be prepared to, to, uh, to have you and, and, and let us know if you're coming and, or how many people you're, you're bringing, just so we can be aware of, of uh, what to bring and how much to bring and so forth to help us plan a lot better. And again, I believe that there's freedom that's coming and deliverance when it comes to this. And so if you're somebody who's wrestling with this issue or you know somebody who's probably coming of age and they're, they're starting to see these you know particular changes and you see somebody going down a wrong path or you're a mentor to somebody, consider bringing them to strengthen your brothers. Uh, you'll see the information on your screen, but we are, we're here to try to bring help, bring sexual healing. And so there's going to be a time of workshops. It's going to be a time of, of uh, prayer. It's going to be a time of information, but the whole point of this is so that we can bring people that's in darkness out so that so we can bring them into the marvelous light. And so meet me in Alpharetta. I think you'll be uh, pretty glad that you did. We promise not to waste your time. We will give you the Word of God, and we will we will go by the Word of God line by line, step by step, so that you can get results in this particular area. Because what can you do if you are free from this certain bondage? What would you do if you didn't have this particular stronghold in your life? Can you change the world? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help provide, give you the information, give you the tools that you need in order so you can go out and win the loss in your world. So meet me in Alpharetta. I think you'll be glad that you did. And thank you so much for tuning into this broadcast, and I hope to see you there. Strengthen Your Brothers is a four-hour sexual healing seminar designed to assist both men and women overcome sexual struggles. This seminar will be held Sunday, April 27th, 3 p.m. at the Courtyard Marriott, 12655. Deerfield Parkway, Alpharetta, Georgia, 30004. To register for Strengthen Your Brothers, log on to ShakirMinistries.org and fill out the registration form on the contact page. There's no cost for registration, but space is limited, so please register today. Thank you for listening to Upon the Rock broadcast. 
If this message has been a blessing, you can help us spread the gospel by sharing this message with your friends. Also, if you're online, please be sure to contact me, either through our website at ShakirMinistries.org or through social media. I would love to hear from you. Together, we can build a godly foundation in the lives of people. Until next time, please know that I'm praying for you, and I hope to see you on our next broadcast.